What is going on, everyone? It's your boy Aaron. Aaron wins YT. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe. Without further ado, let's get into this video. And I am doing a video purely about the bull run. So you guys might have been hearing about that this is going to be the biggest super cycle of all time from Crypto Galaxy, a uh, reputable source. And other YouTubers saying, like, this is going to be the biggest one, bigger than the other ones that have come previously. And you guys might have heard a lot of this, um, this, uh, you guys might have heard a lot of this, you know, this narrative being pushed and why it is and why it could be true. And today we're going to go over it in this video on why it's true. Okay. To, to just come out in the open and why is this super, why is this bull cycle going to be a super cycle and why is it going to be bigger than any other cycle that we've ever seen before we're going to go over that in this video okay no matter what anyone else says we're going to lay down the facts why this is true why it's going to happen and how you could benefit off of it okay so we're going to go back in time machine so throughout generations you know, whether it was your grandparents or your grandparents' grandparents or grandparents before them, there have been cycles where uh, new ideas or new, um, you know, commodities come into existence and they create this thing called generational wealth. Okay, so if we travel a little bit back in time, we had the oil rush, right? Well, it first started out with the gold rush. You know, they would, uh, you would need to get some people together, go ahead, go to the mountains of Colorado, Rocky Mountains of Colorado, and start mining for gold. So you had to mine for gold, and, and this created a, a, a gold rush boom that, tri that triggered generational wealth. And then you had black gold, which was oil in the California mountain, uh, mountains, and you had a drill in California, right, and in some sections of the United States to mine for black gold and that created generational wealth insurmountable generational wealth and then you had the stock market boom in the early 1900s right and if you got in early and even in the early 2000s right which is still relevant if you bought apple stock tesla stock during that time not tesla stock apple stock amazon stock you know some ebay stock some you know paypal stock Right, for example, you know, ExxonMobil maybe, um, that created generational wealth too. If you held on today, I think all those stocks would make you millionaires if you just put three thousand dollars in. Uh, this is data driven analysis, and then we go on to the real estate rush. Your grandparents in the 1970s, the boomers, the 1950s, bought a bunch of real estate. And it was generational wealth for their kids. And they're able to sell it now. And uh, they're millionaires. You know, if you bought a couple of houses for $24,000 back in 1989 and waited till this very day, you could easily flip them for $400,000, $300,000 for a single family home. And you'd be extremely wealthy. Okay, so those are like four examples that I gave out. Oil rush. Uh, gold rush, oil rush, stock market rush, you know, that is still current till today, and real estate rush, which is still kind of relevant today, but, you know, not so much. A lot of real estate people are trying to go a different avenue and maybe leveraging less debt and investing it more into this new wealth prospect called cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. And basically... I would label cryptocurrency as the next form of insurmountable generational wealth that is hitting the market by storm. And there's a lot of factors that take place today that that will catapult this thing further beyond people's expectations. And for example, back then during the gold rush, oil rush, real estate rush, stock market rush, we did not have a very important power, which was the power of the internet, right? Seamless communications and, and ready 
for open or orders and, and buy orders, even in the stock market, you weren't able to grab your phone and click buy now on Amazon stock or eBay stock back in the year 2000. That didn't exist. Back in the year 2000, none of that existed. Also, back in the 1920s, that didn't exist either. So a lot of people missed out of that racket, you know. And a lot of people have missed out on other rackets, like the housing rush, the housing boom, and the gold rush, and, right, and the oil rush, okay? So a big catalyst for a super cycle to occur would be the power of the internet and the vast communication, um, vast communications reach that we have for other countries and our country ourselves. And with a population increasing uh, every year, right? You know, we're we're the the population just isn't increasing, but so is the monetary fiat system. The amount of dollars that are in circulations are increasing, trying to reach up with, uh, trying to catch up essentially. So, a, a big major catalyst would be, like I said, the internet. Okay. Uh, a second major catalyst for the, the cryptocurrency super cycle would be uh, the ETF approvals, okay, for the United States government. ETF approvals means that there these crypto, certain cryptocurrencies are up for trade on the stock market. This would allow a more secure entry for heavy hitter investors like corporate investors, corporations, and organizations to grab an excess amount of capital and give them to these holders that promise to take care of them, right? So the ETFs pretty much mean like you can handle and manage billions and millions of dollars and allocate accordingly to each token and the subsidies of those tokens and the other tokens that are affiliated with that. So if you take that in consideration that the United States and a few other countries have adopted ETFs, that means big organizations and corporations can get ready and can prepare and start allocating a certain percentage of their earnings into an appreciating asset, for example, Bitcoin. Okay, This would be another major, major catalyst for price momentum to target because now you have trillions of dollars that have circulated into mainly commercial real estate and real estate for these big companies to allocate out of real estate and commercial real estate and use their generated wealth to not only pay off a portion of their debt, uh, but use whatever profit that was left over remaining to enter in an appreciating asset that's just risen over a cumulative amount of years. Right, so that is like the second catalyst, the ETFs, ETF approvals, second catalyst to why we're in a super cycle. And previously, um, Bitcoin, uh, throughout every other cycle, never had it government approval or ETF approval, spot approval or options approval. That didn't happen. It was all speculation. Who's going to adopt it? Who's going to allow it? Will it be regulated? Uh, will they allow ETFs to purchase it? And this made corporations and organizations get cold feet and decide not to make entries into the cryptocurrency space because anything thing could happen. They could ban it. It could be banned, which means you wouldn't have access to it at all. And they, a speculative investment, you know, that's not approved by any government. Not gonna make any money off of it, so that gives them a reason not to invest. But because we have ETFs approved now, like I said, it gives them all the more reason to invest their capital and reallocate assets and profit uh, and a certain percentage of their profit margin into something like Bitcoin. Okay, and especially the chart is giving them a reason. A dollar to sixty. $8,000 is a huge milestone and it could only go further from there so long as everyone starts, every organization and every um, corporation starts allocating a percentage, a small percentage. It doesn't even have to be a large percentage. And, you know, a small percentage to them is like, you know, a couple of million or even a billion dollars. Okay. 
So the third catalyst would be country adoption. No other country in any other bull run has ever adopted Bitcoin or cryptocurrency ever as a standard reserve currency, right? But during this bull run, uh, during this, this uh, 2024, 2023, you know, uh, 2022, we've seen El Salvador uh, step up their game as the first country to list it as, list Bitcoin as a reserve uh, currency. It's their reserve currency as the only currency that they're going to keep accumulating and that the citizens can use, right? So, and more countries are easily adopting this method. We have Donald Trump speaking and saying that if he's elected uh, as president in 2025, that um, he will have Bitcoin be the United States reserve asset, uh, the global reserve asset of the United States, and that in quote that Bitcoin, the United States will be the Bitcoin crypto superpower of the world. I'll leave the video right there and you can take a look at it. So we have countries and now political figures speaking about Bitcoin, how Bitcoin can solve a 35, 36 trillion dollar national debt crisis now if you can't imagine what 36 trillion dollars is that's a lot of money 36 trillion dollars in circulation right now means that it's just a lot of duplication they've duplicated a lot of money and now it's out in circulation and you know the money ceases to be valuable at this point and what shows that this is true what shows that this is true and value and the dollar will be value less is well if you just look at the price of the dollar moving from the 1800s all the way to now where we're at the purchasing power has decreased sub substantially a dollar back in the 1800s could have gotten you milk eggs whatever thirty thousand dollars would have gotten you a brand new house in the 1980s uh, maybe two maybe two houses depending on location and now $30,000 only gets you a four-door sedan. And if that, maybe not even that. Maybe it's $50,000, right? A base model, okay? So, so basically, countrywide countries and political adoption and national adoption, not just national, but, but worldwide adoption is happening more at a rapid pace than what we're used to, than we, we, that we could even fathom. And this is also a big thanks to the power of the internet, which I said in the, in the beginning of this video. Uh, the communication structure is so vast and rapid that people don't calculate that. Uh, it just takes a single couple of buttons and a couple of clicks to boost up any token. So... And not just Bitcoin in particular, but the crypto market. And with this being said, everything is set to change the landscape. You know, how we gamble at casinos, how we, um, you know, how we invest our money in traditional assets such as stocks, real estate, and, and, and any hard physical assets like gold and silver too, and basic commodity structures. Uh, cryptocurrency is creating a path that's more accessible and easy to uh, is take out your wealth and to take out your profit. A good example of this would be real estate. If you bought real estate uh, any time from any time, pretty much you have to pay property taxes. You have to ask to get your money out. You have to ask to get a HELOC. You have to ask. It's not yours. You have to ask a third party to access your money. And this is a huge problem, which the, 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 the A-class citizens of America are realizing. A-class being like... Uh, real estate investors are realizing that this is an issue because 
you know, it's also indicative on credit score and it's indicative indicative on how much, you know, your debt to income ratio. And I guess people are kind of now aware that they could have access to their net worth that also appreciates like a house in a blink of an eye through your mobile device. So, uh, or through your computer. And, you know, basically, would they rather let, would they, with an inflated price of houses that aren't worth, uh, you know, $400,000, their actual value would be 90 or 80 or maybe $60,000. But because of, you know, boomers that have uh, entered the real estate and have taken out more loans and more mortgages and 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 refinanced their homes. They've added to the debt cycle. So more addition of a hundred thousand dollars on top of another house, on top of another house, and they have all the time in the world to do this. And they pass it on to their kids. And 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 what we're seeing right now is a price shock, right? Because your average person doesn't have the affordability to enter one of these. Uh, real estate at real estate investment properties right they don't have four hundred thousand dollars of liquid capital or that even of 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 a down payment of ten percent on a forty thousand dollar asset um but yeah we're seeing that the access of money through cryptocurrency is seamless it's easy you grab it you transfer it and you sell it right and the real estate market it's not like that. It's more paperwork on top of paperwork on top of uh, maybe finding a buyer. So so basically, the whole structure is going to change where it's going to be easier to buy a house, right, in the foreseeable future. This is what I calculate is it's going to be easier to buy a house and less expensive to buy a house because all the people that are selling their houses want to move into cryptocurrency. No matter even if they take it at a loss, it doesn't matter. They're, in particular, Bitcoin, but they're going to take their losses, cut down, mark down their prices. So long as they're in some sort of profit, it won't matter to them. And then they'll allocate the percentage into Bitcoin. While people that end up buying now, 2024 to 2026, are going to get screwed over because they're going to be buying at really high prices and they're going to be taken advantage of. And uh, until the housing market completely gets wiped out, and everything gets cut in half. I'm not saying that's going to happen anytime soon. Maybe 2027, 2026. But um, we're already seeing signs of this in the commercial real estate industry. Nobody's renting. They'd rather stuff that money back into their pockets and purchase appreciating assets. Like Bitcoin. And that's why Bitcoin right now is at a uh, uh, trillion dollar uh, market cap. And the cryptocurrencies all are right behind it because they would want an appreciating asset that's easy to liquidate without having to find a buyer or a seller and uh, and and giving cuts to people like your real estate agent, your mortgage lender, your underwriter, right? Your everything. You're giving cuts to everyone. Everyone's getting a slice of the pie. And, you know, I think we're hitting a stage where people just want their net worth to go to their pockets instead of anyone else's. And further ado, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Heron wins out.